Thank you for uh, taking your time off in the afternoon to listen to our opinions and our heartfelt um, positions about uh, what we're talking about today. Um, just preliminary response, why is the bank hard to innovate? I'll tell you why. It's the same thing as uh, looking at a teacher in a school. Um, they can't make mistakes. Banks can't make mistakes. If you look at today's papers, I think Stanchart, uh, if you, any, any one of you here from Stanchart, I, my heart goes up to, to you. It's tough. You have to, you have to put, out, put the plug in, you got to make sure the marketing uh, efforts are there, you got to plug the hole, you, you got to do a lot of things just because of one glitch. But innovators, um, in its own right, have got the oxygen tank and uh, the fire extinguisher, and it's okay, we can make mistakes in a sense. I said this about the military before, I said, you know guys, you, when you, you, you have a new router, it's a half a million dollars, you deploy it, it doesn't work, you just stop the exercise. But you know, in the commercial world, your 995 customer will give you two slaps in your face and <laughs> tell you off for 995 a month. Yeah, so it's, it's a very different world. And um, I think what's important for us is to fully understand um, the complexities uh, as well as the end-to-end -end spectrum of what we're dealing with as a bank or the banking system. Um, just a little bit about, my, about myself. I came through that track. Um, that's going to be summarized in my presentation. But generally, I'm a realist. So in some sense, uh, Edgar and I are similar. If you hear his undertones and his uh, experiences in IBM, uh, he's a realist. And that's why the advice, don't join IBM. I think I will join IBM quickly because you can tell this is hanging out, not the wires for me. Okay. So um, in, in, in Edgar's uh, presentation, you will have heard uh, 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 a lot of what he's been through. Um, I'm, for one, a belief in uh, pictures speaks a thousand words. So you're probably going to see one slide with a lot of words. The rest are all pictures. Um, so I will just dive right into it. Um, I titled my presentation today as a macro view and a small, small print there of the essentials. Why? Because I'm a realist. I look at the roads that we walk on, uh, the infrastructure that we look at. Uh, and I'll take you through a little bit of a memory path for some of you who, are in, uh, who lived in Singapore in the mid-90s to now. Uh, and for those friends from overseas, um, bear with me for this journey. Okay? Uh, this is probably the most uh, number of uh, words that you will see, digital banking. Uh, I classify them into three areas. Uh, the physical location and the geographical hurdles. We call them accessibility. Uh, that's my area of passion, infrastructure. Um, the second area of uh, distance between banks and its customers, psychological barriers, the security, uh, the confidence. As I said today, stand chart issue uh, some years ago, I don't want to name names, a local bank said we are the safest bank in Asia. Um, you know, I think about 120 customers got their ATM hacked into and they lost cash. Uh, but the banks had to come out and say, oh, no, 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 I will protect your money. How often does that happen? Try a Telco, try a service provider, any other service providers, when they make a mistake, what do they do? Tough. Right? It's, it's your problem. If you don't like, you go to the next uh, service provider. But a bank can't do that. The bank is big, strong, and friendly. Right? Uh, the third area uh, will be the mental capacities and uh, capabilities, understanding the technology. And this is something which we are really, really into today. Social media, uh, how do you manage the social engineering, the education, the training, the exposure. Uh, and, and in the very last slide, you will see what I mean when we I should use the word we, when the, uh, the, 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 these needs are clearly, clearly exhibited um, in the mid-90s where I came from. Uh, this infrastructure building, uh, a, a, a building block, uh, which I call them, infrastructure is always the first building block. Um, you can have an idea, you can have a lot of things, you can have a lot of marketing, but if there are no roads, the cars ain't going to travel. So you need infrastructure uh, to begin with. I borrowed this slide uh, from the IDA guy, uh, that's Broadband Network 1. Uh, it was published, this is a standard, that published in uh, issue 1, 1 uh, December 1999. Uh, I think IDA wouldn't mind me borrowing, and if they put me in jail for copyright, I'll be putting myself in jail because I did this in 1997. <laughs> So I just wanted you to see how, how simplistic, how elementary uh, it was in 1996, 97. 
uh, who was a one network here, it was a server switch, ATM user, not the ATM banking, but the asynchronous transfer mode. Uh, it's a secure uh, switching technology uh, for some of us here who are familiar with this. Uh, it lost to IP. IP is a mess, uh, but the mess just kept growing, and now we have IP6, version 6, and it, it's the solution uh, of that mess. Uh, and we will just keep hiding the code. I think the same way for those of us here who are software environment people, uh, Microsoft had 27 disks for the uh, office suite, and now we have DVDs, but no one wanted to clean up the 3 million line code. Uh, but they created a bigger disk so that we can just keep the uh, codes and just keep improving on it. Um, uh, private networks, uh, Singtel, SCV, this is probably quite retro for you, some of us here. Uh, it's called Star Hub Cable today. Uh, they have since merged and bought over. Um, and then there are core networks and all that. So this was just an interface diagram. You can see even the arrows don't really stick out well because then they didn't have snap the grid technology. All right? So this is where it started, the Singapore One Network you know, uh, nationwide. Now prior to this in 97, 96, we're talking about Adala. We're talking about uh, phones of this. This is high tech already then. 28.8 right, kilo, I don't know whether some of us remember this. Uh, but imagine this, these are modems, these are data transfer technology, and, and, and most of us here are familiar with that. A zone phone, um, you are out of the zone, you don't get calls, you, don't, you make calls. Uh, it's, it's zone phone, it's just an extension of a pay phone. Um, the big water bottle kind of, you know, uh, water, uh, had mobile phones. I had this when I was in the US studying, uh, uh, but this was it, this was the coolest thing ever. You could download stuff the fastest, right? Uh, but do you know every one of this in your house or office has a pool of these in the server end? So if you have 2,000 customers, you have 2,000 of these sitting in a room. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Right? But what do we have today? Today we have fiber to the home, Neo TVs, your Star Hubs, uh, cable, and M1, and everyone is on that. You have your mobile. Um, you get high bandwidth. Uh, you get 4G today. Um, uh, I love the US. You know they are spending a lot of money in technology. When I was there, I put my AT&T card into my iPad. 80 meg bandwidth test. 80 meg. You never see the number here in Singapore. At most, on your mobile device, what 7.2, 20, 21, 80 meg a bandwidth test. It's just amazing. It, you know, it's a buffet that they just throw at you and eat all you want. Uh, but that's what we are living in today. And that's only how long ago? 15 years, 16 years, not too long in our lifetime, right? Uh, mobile uh, routers, uh, in the past, you had to go home and go log into your computer and get something done. You want to talk about mobile banking? You want to talk about uh, uh, online banking? You got to go to someone's house and we used to like, hey, you've got a modem, can we come and play games in your house? <laughs> and you remember that? Uh, Today, power line technology. Do you know how destructive this power line technology is? Destructive, why I call it destructive? Because every power point, everywhere there's power, there's communication. Ask yourself if you're a Singaporean, how come power line technology to everywhere didn't happen? Any lamppost is a point of communication. We don't need base stations that are, you know, how many gigahertz and uh, GSM and all that, really, if you, if you really tie into and con collapse all the operators into one, we've got, we've got resiliency, we've got redundancy, we've got the telco networks, we have the power networks. Today, this transmits about 300 meg in your house, yeah, from one plug to another within the same DP. But imagine now, the central office equipment is handling the entire nation. It's powerful. It's already done in many third world countries, by the way, so that's there. Um, satellite phones, fortunately, unfortunately, well, they're still in business because there's still a lot of rural areas that you can't reach, but it's just a matter of time. All you need is to lay a cable, you don't need a data cable, electrical cable, all the way to where the nearest spot. Get the technology to beam all your data out and you're already done. And that's why today, in countries like Vietnam, uh, Cambodia, and these guys, they, they are ahead. 15 years ago, it was hard to imagine, but today, they are ahead. Why? The leapfrog. They skip all that uh, destruction. Now, this is the point about destruction. What the really does this destroy? It destroys the telco's revenue. For those of us who are here, IP train, you will know that circuit switching and packet data, 
that's where the end of the spectrum is. Right? Every packet is a data or a voice. Who knows? But voice circuit switching, you need to reserve pre book Don't let anyone on that road. I may or may not want to travel here. But data is different. Data just throw it up. It will assemble itself when it gets there. And that's why it's disruptive. Uh, the telcos in Singapore uh, took a lot of convincing by the government. Government had a different agenda. The telcos had a different agenda. IDD was $4 a minute when I was going to school. Uh, I would call my girlfriend then and my dad would jump out of the, <laughs> the house. Uh, $800 worth of IDD calls. Today is unheard of, right? Today is about 10,000 minutes for $5 or something. <laughs> Right? So technology is disruptive, but innovation requires that. What I want to present to you today really is that there is a slow road to success, so to speak. If you, you know, heard um, while we are similar in our realist uh, environment, uh, we are different in our views, uh, you know, there is hope for tomorrow because the infrastructure has got to be there. And if you are doing any banking systems or innovation, you must think of the infrastructure that is in place. You know this, this is Singapore, Every, every everywhere outdoors today you have network coverage. Right. Um, by the way, this is my project, this is Capo Marina Bay. I provide the uh, internet uh, Wi-Fi services to the boaters here. Uh, and these are the kind of technology we're looking at. Uh, 5 gigahertz backhaul, it's like an air fiber up to the, 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 the top of the, the building, uh, and then to Wi-Fi to the rest of the boaters. Uh, we don't need to lay cables. Why, why don't we lay cables? Well, I prefer to lay cables, but the pontoons go up and down, the cables after a while will snap. And I'm going to keep changing that last piece. And so the Wi-Fi or wireless technologies are deployed here. But today you're seeing high level uh, uh, of bandwidth going through uh, ubiquitous access. You know, you, if you don't have your 3G, you have your 4G. If you don't have 4G, you got a Wi-Fi. You don't have Wi-Fi, borrow someone's hotspot. It, it's everywhere. <coughs> Security measure is a problem, right? Security controls our problem. Um, the other part of data, uh, of, of security, or infrastructure is data centers. Uh, that's also my, uh, the last spot before I got into consulting, is data centers, disaster recovery uh, sites. Um, all your data centers that you have your services stored on. Uh, look at 9-11, uh, World Trade Center collapsed, um, People lost money, companies lost money. What money did they lose? They lost money in properties that they don't know existed now. Because data was lost, I have got a gazillion number of uh, investments and I don't know where they are now. It's as good as lost, right? Um, data recovery. The data is there, but is it usable? Uh, this, how soon can you get your data recovery done? These are all real issues. Um, this is a gen set that um, we put in uh, somewhere in Taising, I won't tell you where specifically, but we wanted the gen set, and this can power for two weeks non-stop. Just keep topping up, right? Uh, 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 and, and it's enough power to almost sell power to a little, a few buildings around us. And we wanted high security. We hacked the wall off the fifth floor, we took this, put it in, rebuilt the, 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 the walls, and have it secure. Not a typical set up in a basement or outside or a rooftop. Why? Security is always important. When there's a disaster, when there's a destruction, uh, you have a problem. Infrastructure concerns are real. So as we go into this innovative uh, season or, or thinking about how to innovate, um, it has to be relevant to the ground we walk on. It has to be relevant to the infrastructure that is already out there. I recall and recap what I started with. Um, the gaps between the bank and its customers. Um, I put it, put it in the reverse color, infrastructure, advertising, marketing, publicity, social engineering, educational training, exposure, experience. All this basically pulls uh, together, not an exhaustive list, but th this is based on what my experience was uh, that we had to think about. Um, as Dr. John has said, I was working in the uh, telecom authority, so I thought this would be kind of interesting to show. I dug this up just this morning from my archive. Um, this was in uh, 1997. Uh, look at the date, yeah, 30th of May, 26 July. This is all carefully graded, planned out. Um, demonstration of the cabinet, which is the cabinet of Singapore. Uh, Singapore One Press Conference, uh, Asia Telecom 97. Um, and then we have then uh, Prime Minister Go uh, to be the first user of the smart car. 
The second user was Minister Ma, and then we had a blue screen, thanks to Bill Gates. <laughs> uh, he wasn't very pleased, uh, but uh, thank good this uh, happened after PM Go did it. Uh, but what I want to highlight is this, social engineering. Why was this precious old couple put out in this technology environment? It was to gain the confidence of the elderly. You know, in Japan, you don't have a language barrier. Young or old, you speak Japanese, you write Japanese. But in Singapore, or Asia, or a lot of other countries, uh, we have a, a, a language barrier. So the older folks, or the older generation, had a problem. But when this came out, a lot of the people who are 60, 70, 80 years old, they were open to technology. They felt, and I coined it, they say, if old men can do it, I'll do it. And that's, that's, that's what it is. We need to get the confidence level up. And again, my heart goes out to Sancha. You need to put out that message today and say, I'm sorry, it's our problem. We will solve it. This will never happen before uh, again after this. And you have our full assurance that your interest is utmost for us. It has to be that kind of messaging. And that would be a requirement for the banks as well. All right. So um, with that, I end my presentation. I don't know whether you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, I, don't, I think I didn't stop smiling until, uh, since I got through the doors talking to Agar and uh, Norma and Dr. Wong. But uh, I hope you have a good afternoon. And if you have any more questions, we can either take it now or take it later after the anchor woman, the best for the last <laughs> later, right? Okay, all right. Thank you.